Hello everybody and welcome to my new SQL Bash and Academy course where I'm talking today about how to choose the right clustered key for your clustered index. There's a huge debate going on what the best clustered key is. Some are saying an ever increasing value like an inter-identity column is a very good candidate for a clustered key. Others are telling you that a random value like a unique identifier is the best solution. But choosing the right clustered key for your clustered index is really an it depends answer. It depends on your workload and even more on your hardware, if an ever increasing value or a random value makes sense. In this SQL Bash and Academy course, we will look on both extremes that you can use for a clustered key and which problems you are introducing with each approach. Before we go down to the details, I want to give you some information about my person. My name is Klaus Aschenbrenner and I'm the CEO and founder of SQL Bastion, a European-based company specialized in high-quality SQL Server consulting and training. I am an international conference speaker and you can meet me the whole year at international conferences like SQL Bits, SQL Rally and SQL Bass where I'm speaking about SQL Server performance problems and how you can resolve them. Since September 2012, I'm also a Microsoft Certified Master for SQL Server 2008, which is the highest technical certification that you can achieve. You can find further information about my company SQL Passion and my person on sqlpassion.at. You can also follow me on Twitter and watch free SQL Server trainings on my own YouTube channel. Before we look now at the agenda for the next hour, I want to show you with a simple demo why following the best practice by using an int identity column as a clustered key is not always the best option. So let's switch over to SQL Server Management Studio. In this demo, I want to show you how your workload will scale or even not scale when you are using an int identity column as a clustered key for a given SQL Server table. In the first step, I'm creating here a new database with the name orders database. And inside that database, I'm creating a simple table called orders. As you can see from the table definition, I'm using here the identity property for the first column, the column order ID. In this case, SQL Server generates an alter increment value for every record that we are inserting in that table. And every inserted record will be added at the end of our clustered index that we create now in the next step. Afterwards, I'm creating here a simple stored procedure with the name create orders where I'm inserting in an endless loop records into the previous created table orders. By now, we have created the necessary database objects that we need now for our stress testing. What I'm doing in the next step is the following. I'm executing the stored procedure create orders with 100 concurrent users and we will watch in Windows Performance Monitor how many transactions we get per second. For the stress testing itself, I'm using the tool ostress.exe that comes with the RML utilities that you can download completely free from Microsoft. And within Windows Performance Monitor, I'm using the performance counter transactions per second from the performance object SQL Server databases. I'm switching now over to the comment prompt and executing ostress.exe that calls our stored procedure with 100 concurrent users. It takes now a few seconds until the users are connected to SQL Server and when we switch to Windows Performance Monitor, you can already see that we have some transactions, some transactions in our system. I'm getting here around 10 to 15,000 transactions per second. Not too bad. But let's stop now the stress testing and run ostress.exe again, but this time with 200 users. So we are just doubling our workload. This also means that we should get the double throughput of transactions, hopefully. So let's see what happens. 
As you can see now from Windows Performance Monitor, really crazy things are happening within SQL Server. The transactions doesn't have increased. They were even going down a little bit. Huh? What's happening here? Is our SQL Server broken? Is SQL Server not able to scale our workload with more than 100 users? Something mysterious is happening here. So let's switch now over to the slides and have a look on the agenda where we will talk about that specific performance problem in SQL Server.